Mark 1, 14 through 18, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. As now, now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Yes. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed yes. him. <clears throat> My question again, are we really following Jesus or are we just following the crowd? Wow. Are we really following Jesus or are we just, thank you, following the crowd? Let's ask somebody, are you following Jesus, are you following Jesus? or are you following the crowd? Just ask a couple more people around me. Ask them. Come on, ask them. Are you following Jesus or are you following the crowd? Let me just tell you, one of the easiest things to do is just follow the crowd. I want to just, and, and, and this is, let me, let me just, uh, let me do this the way that I feel like the Holy Spirit gave it to me. Let me just follow instructions. Amen? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask all of you right here on this second row to come up behind me, line up behind me. If you on this second row, bring the baby. Come on. Come on, Bishop. Come on. Uh, lady, I want uh, all of you just come on, uh, Imari. Come on. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of defeating the point. All right. All right. Good, good. Just line up. Yeah. All right. When I point, I want you to tell me who I'm pointing to. All right. Lady Gill. Bishop, Bishop Milner. Bishop Milner. Oh, okay, I heard you. Marie. Say it loud. Come on, y'all. Imari. Imari. Minister, Minister Carmen. Sister Makita. All right, now I'm going to go this way. I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself. Now I need y'all to say it loud. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Sister Makita. Minister Carmen. Imari. Imari. Miss Rita. What's the baby name? Bailey. 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 Bishop, Bishop Milner. Bailey. Elder Gale. All right. Good. Did you notice one thing? None of you all mistook, mistook Lady Gale for Rita. Amen. Nobody mistook Bishop Milner for Carmen. Nobody, nobody mistook, mistook Makita for Imari. Nobody mistook Bailey for Imari. Nobody mistook Lady Gale for Bishop Milliner again. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you recognize the difference. Yeah. Woo! Work it, work it. Yeah. You recognize the difference. Everybody say, I recognize, I recognize the, difference. the difference. There is no way you are going to mistake Carmen for Bishop Milliner. That's right, right. There's no way you're going to mistake Bishop Milliner for myself. That's right. You're not going to mistake Lady Gale for Sister Rita. That's right. Why? Because they are uniquely different. Yes, yes. yes. There is something very unique about every last yes, one of them. Yes, yes, yes. There is something so different extremely different that you will never be able to make as long as they live you won't be able to make uh, you won't be able to confuse who's who right. you will never be able to confuse Bailey for Imari right. Right. why and yeah at some point there are those uh, what do they call them doppelgangers where they set find people who look like other people yes. right. but people who know the people won't mistake you for a doppelganger right. because they know and that's a, a doppelganger or somebody who looks like somebody else. They find somebody who looks like a star. Find somebody who looks like this. No, we're not going to be confused. Why? Because we know exactly who's who. We know, even if I didn't 
know Marquita's name, I know she's not Carmen. That's right. 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 That's right. That's right. Amen. Even if I didn't know Sister Rita's name, I know she's not Bishop Melody. You may take your seats. Why? Because I recognize the distinct difference between everybody up here. I know the difference between everybody that was up here. Now, isn't it amazing how even though God in his divine providence created all of us totally different. Yeah. Yet we figure out a way in our minuscule life to just follow and blend in with everybody else. Even though God purposely said, I'm going to make sure D does not look like Bishop Milliner. I'm going to make sure Bishop Milliner does not look like Brother Cook. I'm going to make sure a, a Mother Cook does not look like a, a Mother Milliner. I'm going to make sure Mother Milliner does not look like a Lady Gail. I am going to be specifically intentional to ensure that none of these people look the same so that you won't confuse who's who. Isn't it amazing how we as the church figure out a way to become like everybody else? My God, my God. Never really tapping into who we are uniquely. Good. Forget that. Isn't it amazing how we as individuals figure out a way to just become penguins? Yes. Preach. Oh, wow. Yes. Go ahead. Penguins. Yeah. When God clearly created you as a peacock, yet you yes. figure out a way to become a penguin. Preach it. Wow. And I was wrestling with God about myself this morning. Why am I struggling with who I am, my identity? Why am I, for God, am I struggling at, at, at my age with who I am, with what I'm supposed to be doing? Why am I struggling at this point in my life? And God says, because you refuse to embrace who I created you to be individually. And you spend too much of your time trying to fit in with everybody else. My God, my God. We spend our lives following the crowd. It's because that's what everybody else is doing. It's because that's what everybody else does. And again, I've been on this tangent for the last three weeks. It's because we, we just in on not being who we are divine. Why have I not realized my financial uh, uh, oneness in the earth, my, my blessedness in the earth, my blessedness in the earth? Why does it seem like I'm just struggling? That's because we're not struggling to do as it says over that uh, temple, man know thyself. Uh-huh. My God. We spend so much of our lives knowing everybody else and never researching who we are individually. My God. My when God. you know who you are, then you can be who God created you to be. When you don't know who you are, you will spend your life in conflict with who you are. My God. My God. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. When you don't know who you are, you will spend your life in conflict with who you are. My conflict is not in the world. My conflict is in the fact that I'm conflicted yes. with the fact that I refuse to be who God really called me to be. That's right. As I told you in the book of uh, 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 Leo Tolstoy's Story's book, The Death of, uh, of Ivan Illich, uh, Illich, what if you get to the end of your life and realize you were all wrong? <laughs> Wow. Who wants to get to the end of their life and on your deathbed and realize you had it all wrong? My God. As today, uh, the, the, the nation and media uh, re -look, looks at the life of one uh, John McCain, Senator John McCain. And, and, and I love it that he said something. I love that he said something uh, uh, really profound in one of his last statements interview. He said, I I'm just so blessed that for 60 years I got to live out and do what I was really put on this earth to do. Yeah. And you do not know what? I am so envious, godly envious, of people who recognize that. Amen. And what I want to do.
do is challenge us as people of God. Stop following followers. Stop following the crowd just because everybody else is doing it does not mean that that's what God called you to do. As we, now I'm bridging the gap, as we move into building God a house, one of the things I am keenly aware of is that the reason why you want to keep struggling as a pastor, as a leader, is because many times we spend time trying to build God a house like everybody else is. Say that. Everybody's house looks the same. Sunday morning, you can go into you can go into a thousand houses of worship and probably half of them sang the same songs we sang this morning. I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you that's what it is. I'm gonna tell you, you can go to a thousand churches and they have praise and worship just like we have. I'm right, am I right about it? Yeah. Let's, just, let's just be real. Let's, yeah. let's, let's do the research. Come on, let's, let's think. We're thinking church, right? Amen. You can, you can go to at least a thousand. It, it, it's hundreds of thousands of churches in America. But you can go to at least a thousand, and they're doing the same thing we do, right? Yeah. They, they pretty much have the same what? Order of worship. Why? Because that's what everybody else does. Isn't it amazing? And I'm guilty of this. I, 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 that's why I'm back at the repentance part. A part of my process in these next few weeks is not just to help the church to become what we need to be, but I'm repenting. I'm repenting that I just so many times follow the crowd, especially when I said, God, I'm going to do it like you give me to do it. I'm going to write this vision. I'm going to make it plain. I'm going to do what you called me to do. And isn't it amazing? The more, especially the more church people you gather around you, the more you start looking like church people. Wow. Wow. Man. See you all. <laughs> See you all. Let me just tell you, just because you look like church people don't mean you look like Christians. Let me just break this down. Christians, to be a Christian is to be a follower of Christ. Right, right, right. When you are a follower of Christ, let me just remind you that when you read these Gospels, the people that followed Christ were not following the crowd. No. No. Matter of fact, if you want to be realistic, the crowd killed him. The crowd, when they had a chance to pick Jesus or Barabbas, they said, give us Barabbas. And crucify Jesus. Oh, get rid of him. Crucify him. And the same people, somebody, somebody said the same people. Same. The same people as he came into the city on Palm Sunday that said Hosanna were the same people, many of them, that said crucify him. That's why you cannot afford to follow the crowd. That's right. That's right. Tell somebody, don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the crowd. One of the universities in my mind that I, I started was a university entitled UBU University. <laughs> That's good. Tell us about it. UBU University. Uh, UBU University. It is so hard for us as people, as individuals, to be just that, individuals. Yes. <laughs> Tell somebody, I gotta break the mold. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta break it. I break it. I gotta break it. One of the chant, one of the strongholds in our minds is when we consistently do what everybody else does, just because that's what everybody else has always done. Preach it. And I told you a few weeks ago that one of the hardest things is to realize that when you one of the things you gotta break is that mindset that says we've always done it this way. Uh -huh. Why? And, and, and one of the challenges is, is in, our, in our mind, as I'm reading this other uh, Tolstoy book, uh, The Kingdom of God is Within, is the fact that so many times we don't realize that we are just doing it because that's what we've been taught to do. That's right. That's right. Y'all know that's the truth. That's the truth. That's why I am re- imagining my own self. 
Because I don't want to lead people in a way that I'm just leading what I've always seen. Mm -hmm. And I'm not leading as God has said. Oh, that's a difference. Mm -hmm. It's a difference leading based on what I've always seen mm -hmm. as opposed to what God has said. Right. 